Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, my name is Sherman Moore, and I'm the CEO of Design Group Architects, and uh, very happy to have you here. And happy to uh, see a lot of my friends and colleagues from the renewable community as we welcome a very special guest, Governor Ted Strickland. Uh, Governor Strickland has always been a friend of the industry and a leader on advanced energy policy. He took the helm on passing one of the most aggressive and advanced energy standards in the nation, creating an environment for companies like Design Group and others to prosper and grow in the state of Iowa. Um, if you know about Design Group, I was telling some folks as we came in, it's always been an important part of our history. And uh, our first AIA award project, for example, which was earned in the early 70s, was one that was earned for a project that was built on sustainable principles. Uh, you know, since then, we've won three Governor's Energy Awards, uh, one under each of the two previous administrations and one from Governor Strickland. So thank you for that. Um, recently, Design Group's completed four LEED certified projects ranging from silver to gold. And we've got another six that are in the process uh, anywhere from design to construction. Those would include the Franklin County Courthouse and the expansion to the uh, Columbus Museum of Art. Uh, these, these projects have helped our customers not only save energy, but save money. Okay, by using smart design, new technology, and in some instances, renewable resources. Uh, for example, the Hopping College Energy Institute project uh, uses a 21.2 uh, kilowatt photovoltaic cell array and 2.4 uh, kilowatt uh, wind generator. Uh, and that is a project that's seeking the platinum, which is the highest possible uh, lead certification for a project. Uh, similarly, up in Worthington, the Worthington Arts Council is a project that's using a 7 kilowatt photovoltaic cell as part of its design. So it's these types of advanced energy solutions uh, that are the way of the future and that uh, Governor Strickland recognizes uh, that we need in Ohio to stay at the front of this industry. So with that, I will turn it over to Governor Strickland. So all those who have uh, joined me here today, uh, I am very grateful. The design group certainly, led by Sherm, Solar Vision, led by Greg, very great. Yeah. Um, um, Green Tech Solar and Building Solutions, Roger. And uh, uh, Watt Works is Don. Yep. Yeah. Got, got you all here. Tipping Point Renewable Energy, Eric. Over here. Over here. And Dovetail Solar and Wind, right Dan right Poe. Right okay. <laughs> I want to thank you folks for being here. I want to, I want to thank you for what you do uh, in terms of uh, innovation and job creation uh, in Ohio. Um, I wanted us to get together this morning. And I thank you for joining me. Um, and I am thrilled, quite frankly, to have you here and uh, to know that you are a part of Ohio's growing um, energy uh, economy. Um, I wanted us to get together this morning specifically because um, of an experience I had with my opponent uh, as we were appearing before the editorial board at the Daily News um, rather recently when, uh, to my surprise, uh, he indicated that he is considering turning back the clock on our state's most forward-thinking policies. Congressman Casey made a point to uh, attack some of the strides that we have made, we've undertaken in the field of advanced energy, and he is now considering whether he would roll back one of the most innovative, job-friendly initiatives ever passed in the state of Ohio. You remember back in 2008, we passed Senate Bill 221 legislation that gives Ohio one of the most aggressive new energy standards in America. Simply stated, by the year 2025, 25% of Ohio's energy must come from advanced energy sources like wind and solar, and half of the renewable requirement of that 25% must be created through sources right here in Ohio. New energy jobs are the wave of the future, and creating a new energy standard not only means a better environment for future Ohioans, 
It means that growing advanced energy companies, such as the ones standing here with me, are locating and growing right here in Ohio. DuPont, for example, recently announced plans to make the backside of solar panels, a product they refer to as Tedbar. No relation. <laughs> <laughs> they're making those um, panels, that covering for the panels at their facility in Circleville, investing millions and millions of dollars and creating jobs. Toledo, as many Ohioans already know, is a solar powerhouse. I was recently at the opening of the Wyandotte Solar Farm, which uses 159,000 solar panels covering 80 acres, all of which were made right here in Ohio. Wind power is taking on across Ohio, and the wind supply chain in Ohio is the most active in the country, and maybe some of you have seen this publication by our Department of Development indicating where companies that uh, make up the wind supply chain in Ohio are located. Hugely impressive. When I went to Atlanta, Georgia to um, try to convince a German wind power company that Ohio was the place they should choose as their North American headquarters, um, I, I took a copy of that supply chain uh, illustration with me, and they were hugely surprised. And I believe if that company moves ahead, that Ohio will be the site where they will locate their North American headquarters. In fact, uh, just this year, wind companies in northeastern Ohio announced that they are building five new wind turbines on Lake Erie, turbines produced by GE. This would be the first freshwater wind farm in the country, the first step toward a 10-year plan to build the equivalent of a full-scale power plant fueled by wind. And we are making these projects even more cost-efficient for companies. I called for the elimination of certain taxes on energy products projects in this year's state of state address, and I recently signed into law a bill that eliminates tangible personal property taxes and real property taxes on new renewable and advanced energy projects that break ground uh, by the end of 2011. In fact, projects will be able to start applying for that tax exemption <coughs> today. A recent study by Deloitte Consulting says that one of the top things manufacturers look for in deciding where to locate, expand, invest, and create jobs is energy policy. The best way to keep energy costs low is to conserve energy. Affordable power lowers costs for businesses and makes Ohio a more attractive place for employers to locate and expand. And that's much of what this great company does, helping individuals and companies and communities identify how to do that. Uh, Senate Bill 221 keeps energy rates low by reforming how we set rates in the state of Ohio. And as a result, Ohio's electricity rates today are about 10% below the national average. Now that same study by Deloitte Consulting shows that Ohio is gaining manufacturing jobs related to these energy projects. Now let me say that perhaps Congressman Casey just doesn't understand public policy because he cites the increasing energy costs as one of the main reasons why he would revert, reverse course on our uh, innovation and innovations. SB 221 also requires utilities to invest in efficiency measures in order to reduce overall consumption. In other words, it requires the utilities to do more with less. These conservation efforts help everyone because it's cheaper to conserve energy than to build a new power plant. We all know that. 
or to pay higher prices during peak demand times. Further, SB 221 calls for a 22% reduction in overall energy consumption by the year 2025. Now, companies like our host today, the Design Group, are growing an industry based on the expanded market for energy efficient companies created by SB 221. They are designing homes and businesses that maximize the use of sunlight and lessen their impact on our energy grid. And in regard to my opponent in this election, Congressman Kasich's recent remarks on advanced energy are sadly unsurprising to me based on his past record. While a congressman, on two separate occasions, Congressman Casey attempted to eliminate the Department of Energy at the federal level. On four occasions, he tried to eliminate clean coal programs and even labeled clean coal as, quote, corporate welfare. He's not talking that way now. And as for the wind turbine project on Lake Erie, he said, among other things, we're going to fight it. I want to quote from you exactly what he said. Speaking at the introduction of his Common Sense Initiative, Congressman Kasich said, and I quote, I'll give you a good example of Common Sense Joe. He said, they're talking about putting some sort of wind turbine in Lake Erie in a spawning area. Not a fine bug. There's a spawning area up there that helps the fishing industry in Lake Erie work. I know some people that fish up there at Lake Erie once a year. They're not going to put windmills. That just dumb. If the facts of that hold to be true, it isn't going to happen. We're going to fight it. And I would just respond to that statement by saying that it is an example of shallow and uninformed rhetoric, shallow and uninformed rhetoric. What he apparently does not know is that we have spent months and great effort in researching and mapping Lake Erie. Neither do I want to put wind turbines in spawning areas. And he says some sort of turbine, I guess he's referring to the turbines the very large turbines that are being produced by GE, an Ohio company. He says he knows people who go up there to fish on Lake Erie once a year. Well, I know people who go up there and fish once a year as well, but I know people who fish on Lake Erie every day. I know companies that depend upon Lake Erie for their businesses. And the fact is, for a man who wants to be the governor of this state to take the positions that he's taken about such, a, such an important matter to the future growth of Ohio, to the economy, to job creation, um, it is um, not surprising but disappointing. Now, on the issue of advanced energy, there is a stark difference between myself and John Casey. I have stood and am standing on the side of progress and advancement. And Mr. Casey seems to want to return to a status quo.